Welcome back to another episode of Revamped Outdoors. My name's Elliot, and today we're going to talk about a hard bait. A hard bait, folks. We're going to talk about a design of a hard bait, except that's kind of a lie. It has a soft plastic tail. I'm sorry. Didn't mean to do it to you. I couldn't stop myself. This is coming out of a tall tail series is what I'm calling this because I like puns. I think puns are underrated. If you don't like puns, don't know what to tell you. I'm a punny guy, okay? It's just what I do. But this one we're talking about today is called the Harbinger. Now, we've been through an evolution in this channel. If you were here uh, back in the day, a year and a half ago or so, I tried to do a jointed tail hard bait, right? Um, it's pretty much a monstrosity. I'll give you a, I'll give you a look. See, this is what I came up with. I was using cotter pins, bending them in to make the joint here in the body. You can see where the cotter pins would go in and then just have about this much. This is a bait that's like eight inches long, right? So a cotter pin, <laughs> you know, not really going to handle it. Right. But it's sandwiched in between two pieces. This bait actually has some pretty good, decent action in the water. It looks kind of like a rat bait that goes like this, right? Didn't really take this on anywhere past this design. Made a slight video out of it. Everybody said, hey, man, those cotter pins are going to fall out. And I said, hey, man, probably, yeah, more than likely. But the idea did work and the premise did work, so we did start moving on. And the biggest thing we got out of this design was this tail section here. So I had made a silicone mold for this tail specifically. So that's gonna help us here in the future with the Harbinger. So I utilized that in the design of this bait. This is uh, this is the design. Might not look like a lot, but it's a lot. Took a lot of work, took a lot of you know effort, time, a lot of testing, that sort of thing. I mean, I won't bore you with all of it, but just take my word for it. Took a lot of, a lot of work to get here. Um, this is very similar to what I've done in previous uh, hard baits on this channel. But I guess what I'll go through here really quick, how to make the body, right? The biggest problem with designing a bait, this could be a soft bait, could be a hard bait, doesn't matter. Have a good body design. And for me, especially with hard baits, it's very difficult to make a nice streamlined bait design. So what I did essentially was this kind of took the front half of a well-known musky crankbait and just took that essentially side profile and made a sketch out of that, right? And then that's where it ended. So I just took this essentially the sketch for the side profile and then essentially where the bill angle is going to go. And that was it. After that, then I came in, I made the top profile very similar to what we do with the the soft plastics, right? So I'm going to come in, make a side profile, I'm going to make top profile. I'm going to make one, you know, solid body. So I'm going to take the top profile that I want. I'm going to take the side profile that I want. I'm going to get that solid body. Then what I'm going to come in and do is just go down the line here. Every, I think what I did here was like 10 millimeters or so. I'm going to do every about 10 millimeters. I'm going to make a sketch on that body I'm gonna make ellipses because I don't want it in that real blocky body right I want those to be ellipses I want this thing to be nice cylindrical move through the water eh this was like the third or fourth iteration of this I think maybe five or six can't really remember either way it took quite a bit to get this design the way I wanted it the problem then here is that we have this body that's longer right than it is wide so what happens then is when it's in the water, it just flips over, right? That's all it does, which is a bit of a problem because what you want your lures to do is, you know, orientate the correct way. So if what I mean by that is, so when it hits the water, what it does is this. And that doesn't really work for a crankbait, obviously. We want that to be a completely vertical presentation as it goes through the water. So, a few things had to be done with that. The first is, we needed to add some weight. So what I did is I made the first, initially I made one chamber, and that didn't quite work. So then I made two chambers, that didn't quite work. So I made a third chamber. And what I'm doing is filling this up with number eight shot lead uh, for shotgun shells. So it adds a little bit of a rattle, and it also adds a bit of weight. Now, this also comes in on the other side. 
So it's about a four millimeter gap in between these. Uh, so there's eight millimeter total. Fill those up with the eight shot. I needed that much to actually get this to write itself. Turns out that's about like 16 grams or something of lead, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it's a decent amount. All I have to do is fill up half of it though. I don't have to fill up the other half. So it works out pretty well with that. I did go over in a previous uh, episode a lot of this in reference with a large popper video. So if you want to check that out, check out the popper video. I talk a lot about how I ended up making that. This one's pretty much in that same, you know, same ballpark, same idea. I'm making this uh, just using that AFW fishing wire. So once I determined that it was writing itself correctly, just using the sink, fill it up with water, check it out. I needed to decide what kind of bill would be the best for this. And I came up with three different bill patterns. Uh, this one obviously <laughs> comes out over here. It's not just half a bill. But I had a really sharp kind of knife bill, had more of a bell bill, and then a short stumpy bill. So what I did with these then is I took it in for a bathtub test, determined which bill I like best. I like the bell bill the best, so that's what I ended up going with for the finished lure itself. The short stumpier bill kind of just didn't give it enough action, kind of just pushed through the water. Dove a little bit, but didn't quite push through. And then the knife bill was just straight down, no real action. So the bell bill ended up giving the best action. So the next step here is to add the tail. Now I showed you before on this topper lure that we had this tail, it would come in together on each side of this two piece, you would glue it in place. What I wanted on this tall tail series is I wanted to be able to replace the tail on it if something ever bit it off because a lot of the times these fish are going to come up, miss it, bite off the tail. Then if you have it glued together like we did in this top topper lure, you just end up having this lure that doesn't do anything because you can't put a new tail on it. I didn't want that to happen. So what I ended up doing was taking that same, essentially that same uh, model in there and modeling it into here. So what I've done is I made the Harbinger reloadable. So we're going to be able to put a cartridge in here every time that it gets bit off on the back. What I did essentially here, these little U shapes, this is just for the purpose of painting and epoxying. These are supposed to be sacrificial parts right here. These U's can be cut off at the bottom, but this helps me keep it in a lure turner. So I can clip in a paper clip here and then we can put it into a lure, lure turner without me having to drill in here or anything like that because they are sacrificial. I can cut those off with uh, just wire cutters. So these, never mind these. We took this tail, I took that, brought it in, and then just made an insert for it. So instead of the actual bait itself having the tail, I made an insert. So then you can see this insert, this is half of the insert. You can see the other half here. That matches up perfectly with the topper lure here. This tail that I made, I already have a silicone mold for that. So what I can do is just mold that out, pour that out, and then I can just put it in this insert. I can glue this insert together. So what you have essentially then is a soft plastic tail hanging out of this hard plastic insert that then can be reloaded into the harbinger itself. So that way, if anything bites it off, all you have to do is pull this pin I'm just using cotter pins for now, trying to figure out a different way to kind of make this more uh, streamlined. But a cotter pin works just fine for it now. And frankly, when you're ripping this thing, I don't think it really matters all that much. If you have a cotter pin, whatever. I'm sure somebody will be upset there's a cotter pin in there. I'm sorry. I could do maybe like a, a bolt in there with a nut on this side. So then you'd have to have an Allen wrench out in the boat of that size to get it out and then it's more of a pain in the butt whereas you can just use a needle nose pliers pull a cotter pin out switch out the cartridge so that's the idea uh that's also an ode to why this is called the tall tail series obviously uh you can switch this out reloadable a little bit frustrating that i gotta print these things out right it's a lot of time i gotta print a bunch of these things out no good i don't like doing that so I uh, went ahead and made a uh, mold for urethane casting because I don't want to wait for the print to happen. Needed to have one negative and one positive mold half. So what I have here, this is going to be a positive mold half. This is going to stick into this. So what you end up with is having this impression in a mold, right? Because what we have a couple issues here with designing a mold. 
you have this one here, you can't do a two part because if it's in half, you're just going to make this one solid body. What we need is to have this cut out. So to fix that situation, I made one half stick out and one half stick in with the silicone. So then I made that hole go all the way through the mold. So when this is comes, pops out, the urethane pops out of the mold, you have this one post that went all the way through. So I was sick of them taking so long to print on the printer. So I just made this. Within 10 minutes, I can have then two sets of the tail cartridges ready to go, put a soft plastic in, and glue them together. Now on to the eyes of this thing. So I had originally set it up to where the eyes were just going to be dimpled into the 3D print itself. Didn't quite like the look of that, so I looked into just adding some eyes, 3D eyes themselves. So what I did was I searched on the old eBay there, and I found a seller that sells, you know, 300 of them for like 9 bucks. So I bought 10 millimeter eyes because I figured I'd be using a lot of bigger baits. All I did was model that into the side and then just pushed it in uh, with a press-pull function. I think the eyes make it look a lot better, make it look a little bit more alive than even just trying to, like, airbrush it on there. I think they would make it pop a lot, and I like the look of it. So now we have the bill situation. How do we handle having uh, the lip on this crankbait? Um, I originally had this designed up to have a 3D printed bill, although what I'm doing is printing the body out in 10% infill. So that means the bill itself then also has 10% infill, and you can't really use variable settings to tease that out because if you're printing this bait on its side like that, then if you change up variable settings, you're still going to have it be 10% or 100%. So I didn't quite like that uh, option either. So what I did end up going with was using a Lexan. This one is set up for 0.093 or something like that, Lexan, I think. Uh, I think it's around like 2.3 millimeters. I do have some 3 millimeter Lexan that I'll probably use on the next go around. I just had the point. 093 lying around so I figured give it a shot so it's a little bit of a thinner bill but it does seem to work well that is in the short bell lip shape configuration all I did for that then was just you know 3d print out one that was two layers then I can use that one as a stencil on my Lexan I go through stencil that out cut it out on the scroll saw works pretty well clean it up with some sandpaper just super glue that one in after everything's set up. I usually don't paint uh, or epoxy with the Lexan in there. Uh, I'll add that in after the paint and epoxy. Not much else to say on that, I don't think. I think everything's pretty self-explanatory on that. Seems to look pretty good. I'm sure that I've been putting, you know, B-roll over this, showing you the different stuff. I've went over a lot of my techniques for this uh, bait that it were, were applicable for this bait are definitely uh, associated with that popper video. So if you do want to see a little more in depth, go look at that. It's just, I can't really take the time on this to go through it because this video would be like hours long because of uh, the insert is a whole different video and this, that, and the other thing. And I just got too many projects I want to tell you guys about that. I don't want to spend, you know, excess amount on just this one. So if you are interested, though, in something specific, please leave a comment down below, and I'll do my best to address that. Uh, but so far, this thing has been working really good. I think this is kind of my favorite design that I've done to date. Hopefully you found it entertaining or educational in some way. If you did, make sure to give a like. Maybe consider subscribing. It's YouTube. i got to say that kind of stuff. If I didn't, it'd be, it'd be weird. So, I mean, it, it wouldn't be weird. It'd probably be less annoying. Maybe I should try that sometime. Uh, I think that's about it. It's like 2.30 in the morning, so I, th I think I'm going to head out now. You, you be sure to take care of yourself. And until the next one, keep your amps up and wash your hands.